Welcome to Chapter 3 in a series of instructional videos by the Pacific Salmon Commission. This chapter will explain how to collect biological samples from salmon using the appropriate sampling protocol, and will also describe how to ship samples so they don't get damaged. There will be a short quiz at the end of the video to test what you've learned about sampling protocol. Biological sampling broadly refers to the collection of a scale and DNA tissue, as well as the measurement of weight, length, and sex. These samples provide essential information for the in-season management of Fraser River sockeye and pink salmon. Let's start with an overview of the sampling process for a single salmon. This sampler starts by weighing the fish on a scale and reading the weight to a recorder. The sampler then places the fish on a table and reads the length between the two stakes of the measuring stick. Next, a small slit is made along the ventral side of the fish and the sampler feels the gonads to determine the sex. A single scale is then collected from a specific location on the salmon, just above the lateral line. Finally, a DNA tissue sample is collected from the adipose bin then placed on a sheet of Wattman paper, which binds, dries, and preserves the DNA tissue. The entire sampling process took less than a minute for this fish, though it may take longer without a helper to record information. The recorder has written down the length, sex, and weight, and the scale was placed in a pocket in the scale book next to the recorded data. Now we'll go into more detailed instructions on the components of a biological sample, starting with the weight, length, and sex. To record weight, simply place the fish on a scale in the stable position then record the weight in pounds or kilograms to an accuracy of one decimal place. The Pacific Salmon Commission usually measures length from the rear of the eye socket to the fork in the caudal fin, which is known as the post-orbital fork length. Length should be recorded to the nearest millimeter based on the distance between the two stakes of the measuring stick. To sex the fish, a small slit is made on the ventral side about one or two inches in length, beginning at the pectoral fins. Before cutting the fish, make sure you have permission. The gonads are located a couple inches inside the fish against the muscle tissue. Female salmon can be identified by bumps on their gonadal tissue, which are the roe or eggs. Gonads of male salmon will be noticeably smoother. Let's move on to the collection of a scale sample. A single scale should be collected from each salmon using a set of forceps. Ideally, the preferred scale should be collected, which is the scale located on the left side of the salmon, two scale rows above the lateral line and along a diagonal line from the back of the dorsal fin to the front of the anal fin. You can see how the sampler traces this location using the forceps prior to collecting the scale. If the preferred scale on the left side is unavailable, the scale should be taken from the same scale row as close as possible to the left or right. If no nearby scales are available on the left side, a scale sample can also be taken from the right side of the fish. If there are no suitable scales available, make a note in the scale book and continue collecting the other sample information. The scale should be carefully placed in the folded pocket of the scale book next to the corresponding biological data. Make sure the single scale has been deposited and be careful not to use excessive force when handling the scale, otherwise it may become damaged and become impossible to analyze. The final sampling component is collection of a DNA tissue sample. DNA is collected using a hole punch to remove a small disc of tissue from the margin of the adipose fin. Thinner tissue is best because it preserves better and the sample does not need to fill the entire hole punch. If the adipose fin is missing, take the sample from the caudal fin instead. Be careful to avoid contamination between samples by cleaning blood and slime from your hands and tools. The sample should be placed firmly onto the appropriate square of the Wattman sheet. Make sure you only take one DNA sample from each fish to avoid getting samples mixed up. It's also important to avoid contaminating Wattman sheets with excessive blood and slime, and they should also be kept dry out of the rain or splashing water. If it's raining, try to sample in a covered area, or use a storage clipboard to protect the Wattman sheets. Wattman sheets are made of high absorbency filter paper, and will bind the sample and dry it out, allowing it to be safely preserved and shipped. The Pacific Salmon Commission now uses Wattman sheets almost exclusively for DNA preservation, because they are easier to prepare and ship and cost less compared to ethanol preservation. We print special grid patterns on the Wattman sheets, with each grid containing DNA sample numbers that identify up to 100 fish. The DNA sample numbers are found at the top of each square and should be recorded in the scale book next to the corresponding scale and biological data. This allows the scale and biological data to all be matched to the DNA from the same fish. Just as important as proper measurement and collection technique is legible and accurate recording of data. When collecting matched DNA and scale samples, information will generally be recorded in a scale book. It's important to be consistent with how information is entered into the scale book, using the same units for length and weight throughout. The first page of the book should include a legend that shows the location of each entered piece of information, as well as the units used. The cover page of the scale book should include information on the origin and contents of the sample collection, such as the catch date and location. Biological sampling does not always need to include matching scales and DNA, and in some cases it may be best to use other sample collection types that are less informative 
but faster and easier to collect. For example, sometimes a DNA-only sample could be collected, which consists of DNA and matching biological data without any scales. In this case, the biological data and matching DNA number should be recorded on a data form rather than within a scale book. Another useful sample collection type is a bulk sample, in which DNA samples are collected without any matching biological data or scales. A single tissue sample from each fish is collected, and up to 50 samples are stored together in a single vial of ethanol for preservation. Bulk samples can be used when time is very limited, or if fish have already been processed. Once the samples are collected and you have double-checked that all forms have been filled out, the samples can be shipped for analysis. A major advantage of Wattman sheets over ethanol kits is that they are lightweight and do not contain any hazardous substances, so they are much easier to ship. However, you should take some precautions to ensure the samples do not get damaged. The Wattman sheet should be left out to air dry prior to shipping, which will bind the DNA tissue to the sheet and prevent samples from falling off. To further protect the samples, the Wattman sheet should be covered with parchment paper or placed inside an individual envelope. Wattman sheets need to be shipped within rigid cardboard envelopes, also called stay flats, to keep them from bending and getting damaged. Place the covered Wattman sheet in the envelope along with the scale books and any other data sheets, again making sure that all forms have been filled out. Seal the envelope and the samples are now ready to be shipped. Envelopes should be addressed to the downtown office of the Pacific Salmon Commission, unless otherwise directed. Now it's time for a short quiz to review biological sampling protocol. The answers to this quiz will be shown at the end of the video. Question 1. Which is the correct scale to sample on salmon, and what should you do if that scale is not available? Question 2. How can you ensure good preservation of DNA, and how can you avoid DNA contamination among fish samples? Question 3. What information is absolutely essential to include when collecting and shipping samples?